And then let's get to the the third game seven that's going to be coming up this weekend um, between the Flyers, who have uh, forced a game seven with their third overtime win of the series. The Flyers have never done that before in a same series. A two overtime win over the Islanders. Who do you think has the advantage in this seventh game? You know, momentum usually doesn't carry over, Rich, in a playoff series. But in this one, for the first faceoff, momentum's clearly on the side of the Philadelphia Flyers just because of how they won their game six to force a game seven. So the Islanders better get on their horse in a hurry and not allow Philadelphia to dictate the terms with some of their bigger people like Kevin Hayes and not let the Philadelphia defense make a difference in terms of manufacturing offense from the defense. If Philadelphia is allowed to get physical early, not take penalties and take some of the speed portion away from the Islanders. That's the problem for the Islanders. So the momentum will have really gone from game six to game seven. But if the Islanders get their game going early uh, with speed and score early, I think they have a little bit of an advantage. So, again, it's a little bit like Colorado and Dallas. Whoever gets to their game first uh, probably has the best chance to win. Yeah, I know it's not your bubble, Pierre, but, I mean, what is what does Tampa do in a bubble? Just chilling in Toronto? I mean, just uh, <laughs> honestly, it, it, they might go uh, a full week without playing a, a, a game. Looks like if it. There's, if you weren't, you know what, Rich, i got to tell you, I lived in Toronto for a couple of years, and I, obviously over the years I've coached a lot of games there and broadcast a ton of games there. It's an awesome city when there's no bubble. Right. <laughs> you go to a lot of good restaurants, and there are a lot of good clubs to hang out in. Um, but in the bubble, it's a little different. The one thing I'd say, again, uh, tip of the hat to the NHL in particular and the Players Association, um, they've found day trips for these players to do. They've given them places to go, green space to where they can go, where it's still part of the bubble. Uh, I have not been in the Toronto bubble. Obviously, I've been here for a long time now, and it's been, uh, since August 27th. So I've seen how our bubble works, and I've heard really good things about the Toronto bubble, but I haven't been there, Rich, so I can't speak to it. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.